If you are new to the world of deep learning and you have heard of something known as PyTorch and you want to understand more details of it, that is what is the purpose of this video. Let us start the detailed discussion of PyTorch starting from scratch. Here are the topics for this video guys. We are going to understand what are tensors in PyTorch. I am sure you have heard of this term called tensors and it is very important from PyTorch point of view. Okay. Then we are going to see what are the important modules in PyTorch if we want to build a neural network model. Okay. Then we are going to see what is device. This is a very, very important concept in PyTorch. This makes the torch framework faster and efficient. Okay. Then we are going to see how to build a simple model in PyTorch. I am going to show you the demo. We are going to save the model and use the model just like normal. Uh, we do the, the process in machine learning and deep learning, right? And then I am going to leave you with some next topics. And based on your interest, I will continue more videos on PyTorch if I get good number of comments that we want to go deeper into PyTorch. Okay. So let's start with what are tensors in PyTorch. So this looks to be a fancy term just like prompt in Gen AI but it is not a fancy thing at all. Okay. Tensors are nothing but multidimensional NumPy array. You can think of like that. Okay. So single dimensional also it can be multidimensional also it can be. So every time somebody says tensors, you can simply think like a NumPy ND array. Let me show you one example in notebook how tensors look like. So here I am writing what are tensors in PyTorch? So I'm importing something known as torch. Torch is nothing but the PyTorch. And then I'm saying import NumPy as NP. Okay. Here I'm creating a data like this. So at the moment I create data like this, right? This is a N dimensional data in this case. What I do, I just pass this data to torch.tensor. Okay. At the moment I pass the data to torch.tensor, you can see that when I'm printing X underscore data, right? It says that it is a tensor. So tensor is what? Tensor is nothing but a n-dimensional array in the language of NumPy. Okay. And just to show more relevance here, I can also have a NP array of that data, same data that I have created here, same list that I have created here. I can create a NP array for this, pass that in torch from NumPy method, and I can get the same tensor as output. So what it means is, uh, I can generate tensors through a NumPy array or from a Python list and vice versa. Like for this all to this, I can convert back to NumPy ND array. Okay. This is the concept. First concept of torch that is tensors. Now, before moving any forward guys, let me tell you basics of what are few things that you should know about uh, PyTorch, right? So what is PyTorch? It is a popular and efficient framework for deep learning implementations. Okay. Neural network implementations, deep learning implementation. What makes PyTorch popular and efficient? We will try to understand one such uh, factor of PyTorch becoming so efficient and popular is tensors. Okay. So if you saw right, tensor is nothing but a ND array kind of thing. What, how this helps is, you know, Deep learning models are more about computation, weight optimization, gradient descent, uh, weight updation, normalization. You know, it is more of optimizing a network. Okay. So the mathematical computations play a very important role here. And mathematical computations in terms of tensors are faster. So if you if you use tensor for doing a mathematical computation, and if you add a GPU kind of environment on top of it, right? then it becomes very, very fast. Hence, PyTorch is popular and efficient uh, framework to build your deep learning model. Now, I want to give one disclaimer here, guys, regarding PyTorch. If you don't find yourself comfortable in Python, then first become little comfortable in Python. I mean to say that if you say that I'm only a packages guy, I know how to use pandas numpy and I do my job that is not going to work in PyTorch implementations, okay? So you have to learn the object-oriented programming concepts. You have to learn how Python multiple methods, inheritance, classes, all those things works. Then only you'll be able to take full advantage of PyTorch, okay? 
Why I am saying you this? Let me show you with one example. And we will parallelly understand also what is happening as part of PyTorch simple model implementation. Okay. So this was few basic stuff about PyTorch. Now we understood what is tensor and what is PyTorch at high level. Let's see what are the important modules. As you can see here, I'm importing NN. So NN means neural network from PyTorch. Okay. I'm importing data load loader. Data loader is nothing but a but a wrapper on top of. So if there is a data set, right? Uh, in PyTorch, if I put a wrapper of data loader on that, then it is easier for me to process in batches, shuffle the data, take the sample out. So it makes my job faster and easier if I use this module, okay? Data sets is basically to pull some data, which I'll use now. Then comes two tensor. Two tensor, what it will do is it will convert your image or ND array to tensor, okay? And then obviously matplotlib, all of you know already. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to import some training data from open data sets. So I'm importing a data called fashion mist. This is basically a data set for, if you know the mist data set, handwriting digit data set, right? This is about fashion related to that. So some fashion items will show. This is basically a vision problem, computer vision problem. So it will show you some images of hoodies, sweaters, t-shirts, boots, etc. And model has to identify what is that, okay? So training data I'm importing here and test data I'm importing here, if you can see. Now, while importing the data, you can see that I'm using data sets module, which I imported here. I told you data sets is to pull data from various repositories. This is the name of my data. Root is data, train is true means it will give me training data, train is false means it will give me test data, okay? And then I'm converting this to tensor because I want the tensors of that because the whole purpose is to make it faster. Once I get this data here, you can see it is downloaded. Okay. Just to show you here, these are the maps. Okay. Labels. So t-shirt, trouser, pullover, dress coat, sandal, shirt, sneaker, bag, and ankle boots. Okay. And this is how your data looks like. So as you can see, coat, the image of coat, dress, image of dress, sandal, sneaker, sneaker, trouser, trouser, sandal, trouser. So this is basically your data, okay? One image, one label, one image, one label, one image, one label. Now, one thing about this data is it is 28 cross 28 pixel data, okay? So what is the size of each image? 28 cross 28. And here, what I'm doing, one class. So this is coat class, this is dress class, this is sandal class, okay? So these are relevant information because I'll be defining the model now. So this is about your data. What is the independent feature? Your pictures. What is the size of your picture? 28 cross 28. What is the target level? One, I mean size. And what is the target level? These nine, 10 categories, okay? Let's come down here and try to see what I'm doing is, if you remember, I told you data loader is a module that helps me to create batches of my data, okay? Here, data loader. So I will come here and I will, from my data sets, what I imported, right? I will create my train data and test data using data loaders. This is what I'm doing here. And my batch size is 64, which means 64 uh, items will go for training in one shot, 64 records, okay? Now, one important thing to understand here is device concept in PyTorch, okay? So PyTorch, you can run on CUDA or you can run on GPU, CPU, whatever, okay? This is uh, Google Cloud, um, I'm sorry, uh, Colab, Colab uh, I'm using this, right? So I can make it like, G I can enable GPU, but for now I am using in CPU only, okay? So whatever you do, right, that becomes your device, whether it is, it is GPU or CPU or CUDA, that becomes your device like this, okay? And why, why it is important to understand the concept of devices, whatever train data or test data or model you will be using, right? All that you will put in the device, then only it will work. Otherwise it will not work. Suppose I'm using GPU, then I need to put my data plus model plus artifacts, everything in that GPU machine. Otherwise it will not work, okay? So here I know what is my device, my device is CPU. Now, most important part of this video guys, two very, very important concepts try to understand for building a simple neural network in PyTorch, okay? So this code is very important. Please pay attention here. Please pay attention from here to here, okay? So as I was telling you, you need to know some Python concepts for implementing PyTorch in, uh, in a efficient way, okay? 
so here you can see this is a class neural network that is getting created from nn dot module as its parent class now this is the concept of inheritance in python okay so what happens in inheritance is there is one parent class and then there is a child class okay so from this nn dot module this neural network class is getting created what is happening here is there are two methods here. One is double underscore INIT method, which is normally a constructor in a class. Here also one constructor. Okay. And other is forward method. So what is happening here is through INIT method, right? When I define an object of that class, which I'm doing right here, when I'm defining object of the class, right? This constructor will get, will get called and the structure of my network will get defined. Pay attention here, guys. What I'm doing is I am defining a structure of my neural network. See here, I'm taking a flatten layer. Then I'm stacking few layers here. See here, relu stack, nn dot sequential. I'm saying 28 per, cross 28, my input will come. I told you in the beginning, 28 cross 28 is size of all my images. Okay, so the images which you see here, 28 cross 28 is the sizes of that. Okay, pixel wise, I'm saying. Then 512 is what I'm taking as output. 512, 512, and in the end, as I have 10 classes, right? So I'm giving in the final uh, layer, I'm giving 10 sides. Okay. So here, this is my um, structure of my neural network that is defined inside where? Inside constructor method, that is INIT method. Okay. And this forward method, right? These are fixed methods. Remember, you cannot change the name of this. Okay, this forward method, what it does is it tells your neural network like how to do the forward propagation. So if you see here, it is very simple. It just tells that take everything that is in linear ReLU stack and you know, keep running that and return the logits. So it will just give you um, logits, which means your, your forward propagation will happen from here. Okay. And here, what is happening is, as I told you, I'm creating an object of that class and I'm saying, this is my device, pass it to that device. Suppose I want to pass my model to a GPU for training. So this line that I'm highlighting here will do that. Okay. And then I'm printing the model. So as I was telling you, from device, I have not enabled GPU. So CPU will work for me. So my device will be CPU. And as I was telling you, this is the structure of my neural network. So sequential input features, output features, out input features, output features, input features, output features. Okay. So this is the network that I have defined. Now I have the network defined. I have the train and test data. What else I need? Remember few days back, I had created a video on how to learn something in deep learning and machine learning by doing it without packages. Okay. So let's think in those directions without packages. What else do you need? You have the neural network structure. You have the train and test data. Now you need a optimizer, right? Because you want to optimize the weights and you need to call train and test function. Okay. Let's see how to do those things. So here I am defining a loss function and I'm defining a optimizer. Very simple neural network cross entropy loss is the loss I'm using and torch dot optimizer SGD stochastic gradient descent is what I'm using from the above model. I have taken the parameter learning rate. I have taken a very small value here. Okay. So this is about your loss function and optimizer you are defining. Now the last piece of the puzzle, you just need a train function and test function. So in this train function, I am saying go to my neural network and take the data loader load it to the device where I want to do the processing. This is my prediction. This is my loss and then just optimize the loss. Okay. That is the entire thing that is happening here in back propagation. Okay. Now what is happening here? This is for train function and this part is for test function. Same thing. If you see the difference here guys, right? I'm calling here model dot train and I'm calling here model dot avail model dot avail means I want to test. I'm not training. Okay, don't worry. I'll I'll give you this notebook so it will be easier for you to play around with this. Okay, so in first one, what I'm saying, run my train function. In second one, I'm saying run my test function. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to call my training. So see here, epoch is equal to five for i in range epoch t train train data loader which we had created in the beginning test test data loader. Okay, and then five epochs it will run and model will get trained. Okay. 
I know it is getting little complex because you know we don't do these things by our hands we do through packages but there is a purpose why I am showing you this particular notebook only because I want you to think how the network works inside okay you need a loss function you need a optimizer you need a train function you need a test function all these things you have written you trained your model here I have run everything just to save some time and here is the model and if I want to save the model in torch, then I will say torch.save model.statedict model.pth and then it will save it to this directory. And then what I can do is I can simply load the model and load state dict. Okay. So from the device, I am loading the model and I am just loading the state dict. Okay. So uh, I'm here. What I'm doing, I'm just passing the classes and I am predicting. For example, this is my X and this is my Y. This is my test data input, test data output, and then I am running it here. So actually is ankle boot and predicted is also ankle boot. Okay, for this particular number entry in the data. Fine. So what I have done here, I have followed all the processes. The only thing is five major things that you need to understand from this video. What are tensors and dimensional arrays that are used in PyTorch for faster processing? What are important modules? NN is the module through which you will do your uh, model building. Data sets you will use for data and two tensors, etc. you will use for tensor, okay? This is about this data, so nothing special. Breaking the data in train and test. Device is important. Remember, you have to put everything in the device to work it smoothly. This part is very important. Forward tells you how to do the forward propagation and INIT method tells you the structure of your network. Okay. Once these things are ready to you define your loss function optimizer train and test however you want to define and then you call this method. Okay. So your your you know prediction can be your model can be saved and your state dict can be loaded. Okay. And then prediction can be made from here. So this is a very simple implementation of what is PyTorch? Now, there are many things to it. Before that, one disclaimer, guys. I told you I'll give you this notebook. This notebook is already available here. I have taken this from the PyTorch official documentation. So, courtesy to PyTorch for providing this beautiful note, which I could use as it is. Because if I will go and create a new one, I'll, I'll be writing the same things. So, better to take it from here. Okay. And this is just the tip of the iceberg in PyTorch. We can do many things. See this link here, guys. You can go and read. And here, what I can do is I can go into more details of these. Okay. If you guys are interested, please drop me a comment saying you want to go in more details of PyTorch, understand how to tune the model, how to optimize, etc. We can do more sessions on this. Okay. Please give me a thumbs up, guys. If you like this video, I'll see you all in the next video, wherever you are. Stay safe and take care.